Welcome to Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast, where we hear real stories from real people and we tackle all sorts of fun topics in the areas of business, marketing, entrepreneurship, mindset, the arts, and well, life itself. It's amazing what you'll pick up. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, everyone. I have a fantastic guest here for episode 205 of Playing with Perspective, the suspended animation podcast. Aurélie Elve, have I pronounced your name correctly? Perfectly. I think you must have practiced uh, a little bit. <laughs> I've been practicing my French. But uh, Aurélie is here to chat about the French art of seduction. What a fantastic episode for a Friday afternoon. So Aurélie is a love coach, certified NLP practitioner, and relationships master coach, helping people attract and create high quality relationships. Originally from the country of love, she teaches the French art of seduction and is on a mission to spread the love across the globe. So uh, welcome Aurélie. Ça va? Thank you. Ça va super. I'm so excited to be here to have this conversation with you. It's always fun to have a chat with you. Absolutely. My pleasure. It's going to be fantastic. Um, so let's kick off. I'd love to kind of get an idea of how you fell into working in this area. There must have been a great story to this. Well, there's a couple of stories behind that. So the harsh truth is a breakup. So when I went through a breakup with my, my ex-partner, um, it was really heartbreaking and before we got together I was actually very uh, independent I was running my own life had been traveling the world and I knew who I was and I was great but when we got together I decided I was going to be the best girlfriend ever uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, so doing all the cooking all the cleaning looking after the kids and all that oh and I, I lost myself literally lost myself wow. and um and so much so that I didn't love myself. He didn't love the person I had become. Mm -hmm. And it was just not working anymore. And no matter how hard we tried, and we still loved each other in the end, but it wasn't working because I, I just couldn't get back on my feet. So unfortunately, it had to end for me to go on that journey uh, to, to find my grounds again. So I went through lots of seminars and eventually coaching and became a coach myself. And, you know, you become a great teacher of what you need to learn first. So I needed to learn about relationship. And that's why now I'm teaching about that. Love it. Now, the, the other backstory um, is my parents' uh, love story, which is why I absolutely believe in unconditional love because they so she was from a wealthy family and she chose she fell in love with my granddad who was a farm boy mm -hmm. and when she made that decision then she was disinherited by her family and kicked out of the family mm -hmm. and so they they created their own little family living in a bus because they were very poor and they had five children and because they were so poor they were taken away and placed in foster homes they had six more children. It was really cold in Europe, you know. <laughs> they had to keep themselves warm in winter, I guess. <laughs> uh, and and oh, a lot right. of love. I love. I want to think that there was a lot of love too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and so they had six more children, and same story. The six children were taken away, and my granddad actually died of a heart attack, which I interpret as a you know heartbroken, mm. and uh, so. This is really the, something that's haunting me all my life is, you know, how can you love with your full heart, knowing that all the comfort and wealth that you've been living with can be taken away, but also the trust that you've made and, and your 11 children can be taken away from you. So that's the story that's been running in my own uh, psyche and that I'm working with and that explains why I love love so much and why I want to help people to live the best love stories and harmonious and you know happy ending not just like my grandparents did yeah oh, wow and do you think that in this day and age now in the modern world people are having more trouble finding love they do and 
it's because they're not only disconnected with other people, but first and foremost, disconnected with themselves. And we're in an era where there's so much technology, we have forgotten the basic of human connection or how to relate. And COVID has been uh, terrible in that sense um, because people are actually hiding behind a screen. So yes, we are talking to each other and we're seeing each other, but there's so many factors from of communication that are, you know that are missing and it's so easy to hide because like i could i'm not that i could be wearing my jammies and you know just have this bit ready for the screen but then going in the real world and um yeah it's a totally different story and when we see people using dating apps for example they would write something in text messages they would never dare saying someone you know if uh, in person if they had the person in front of them they would never say certain things so it's um it is more difficult from that standpoint than for the idea of you know there's not even enough men or not enough women or the quality of men and women you know <laughs> this is all attached to personal belief systems more than anything yeah. so but the, the the societal factor of how we relate and how we connect is definitely one that that needs a bit of support at the moment we're all a bit lost yeah i agree i think uh you know, post COVID in a way has changed the way we it changed our equilibrium and we're still trying to work out what our normal is. It's going to take a little while to settle, I think. Yeah. But I want to expand on something that I've heard you say. You say your life is only as good as the quality of your relationships. Improve your relationships, improve your life. Let's expand on that a little bit. I'd love to get your take on that. Yeah. Well, uh... If you're constantly fighting with yourself to start with, because you're the person you spend the most time with, uh, like you're arguing with yourself, if you're constantly fighting with, with you know, your partner, your uh, colleagues, your boss, your your friends, life is a fight all the time. You know, you're not at peace essentially. If you're fighting all the time, by definition, you're not at peace, and and life becomes a punish. And, and a lot of the time, uh, those fights start with an inner fight. Uh, is you, we run stories, we run belief systems that drive our decisions, that drive our actions, that drive how we behave around people. And uh, if I make my mind that I can't trust that person, no matter how honest that person is, and no matter how hard they try to prove me that they are, I will always be looking for element of, uh, you know, cheating or lying or whatever. So it really starts with ourselves, our relationship to ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, what we choose to believe, yeah. and whether it's serving us or not. And that has an impact on the relationships with have with others because essentially the way we perceive others um, has more to do with um, our own belief system than the person themselves yeah that's the interpretation the perspective the yeah. judgment it's our, even it's that our we lens. have of these we all people. have a lens through which we see yes exactly yeah. that's exactly that yeah. so so clean up the dirty glasses clean up the lens <laughs> and you have better relationships right <laughs> yeah i love it that's fascinating absolutely and in terms of dating i've also heard you say the way you do one thing is the way you do everything well, it's very easily explained simply because our brain, you know, every given second we're exposed to 2 million bits of information. The brain can only process 134. So that's really a tiny bit of this big universe every second. And so the brain has to make some decisions. So it would cut out some information, distort some information and generalize some others. Um, so we all have very unique filters of what reality is, what it means. And um, so when your brain has a magic formula, when your success formula, and it knows what works. So for example, as a kid, if you were throwing a tantrum and you got what you wanted, as an adult, you're most likely to repeat that pattern and just throw a tantrum. So maybe you're not rolling on the floor and screaming anymore, but express it in a different way, but still throwing a tantrum to get what you want. Now, is it working for you or not? That's a different story. Um, but uh, essentially because of the limited capacity of the brain, if, if it works in one aspect, of your life you're most likely going to repeat that same set of um beliefs and parameter to choose your reality yeah and just apply it across the board so uh last year was focusing a lot on working with corporate women and they are very uh, driven and very masculine in a way even though they might look very feminine you know the 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 way of thinking is very uh, logical uh goal-oriented and uh, go 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 
and they're applying that same formula to relationships. Now, the reason why they might be doing that is probably for being accepted amongst the men, uh, maybe a, a need for control, but then you apply that in the relationships. Where is the place of the man if she's already taking the seat? It's very complicated. Um, and if she's, you know, it's my way or the highway. Well, it's, you know, it's a partnership. It's together. Yeah. So it's kind of a, yeah. it's kind of a nice segue into something that I wanted to chat about um, a little bit later, but let's do it now is this role of masculine, feminine and feminism or the evolution of feminism in the last so many years. Do you think that that's really affecting people finding long lasting partners? Oh, absolutely. And that, that's why I call feminism gone wrong. You know, like they, they had a, a good reason why they would adopt the men's tools to, to be treated as equal, you know, back in the days. Um, but now they have suppressed those feminine aspects of the personality that is as valuable as the masculine traits. And I think it's starting to shift in the, in the workplace slowly embracing more of the flow um, characteristics and the more creative kind of uh, skills and qualities that's attached with feminine energy, because we all men and women, everyone has feminine and masculine energy within themselves. So it's not gender specific, but yeah, definitely like what was, originally a way to be treated as equal is now becoming competition and in a relationship it's not about competition it's about growing together it's about it's a dance so I'm a salsa dancer so the analogy is really easy if you know he holds the frame so that she can create something but if she's controlling the frame then there's no room for creation so they both have to play their part, but leave room for each other to play that part because otherwise it's just too rigid. It's There's no flexibility. There's no room to grow together. And I believe that the purpose of being in a relationship is is growth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I love that analogy of the salsa um, partnership. That's beautiful because I think it's true. You know, I think over the years, a lot of men are starting to get too in touch with their feminine side and a lot of women are starting to execute more of a masculine frame, whether it's because they think they have to because of as work or to get things done. But I think it's the roles are starting to reverse and that's kind of caused this friction. Mm -hmm. Last year, so I did a a research where I interviewed 58 single men and women, Australian, and uh, the women were saying, um, Oh, we want men to be men. We want them to take action, come to us, have a conversation. Yeah. Uh, the women felt they had to lead. But on the other side, the men were saying, well, yeah, but when we do, then there's, you know, there's the harassment factor, the me too factor, there's this kind of a hiding thing or in Anglo-Saxon culture, because I saw that when I lived in London and here in Australia as well, um, you know, unless they completely, that's a generality, not everyone's like that, okay, um, but uh, like they would find courage in in drinking, um, and so that led to a comment from those women saying, but actually Europeans are a bit different, I'm like, aha, uh-huh. so I want to know more about that, and that's how I went into interviewing French people as well to understand, you know, how the French mindset is different in relationship, and that's how the French art of seduction was born, actually, from those it. two research combined, um, so it's I interesting. Love it. I love it. So let's chat about that. So that comes down to the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you think about culture and whatever culture, it's a set of beliefs and and ways to do things. So there's a set of beliefs for French people that comes from the history. So, you know, like, and it's the old continent. So there's been a lot of wars, a lot of uh, political changes, a lot of pandemics that has shaped the the French psyche. And um, so... Obviously, not every French person is the same, but we have this common ground, this common belief about how life is meant to be lived. And um, so the French pillar would be, we love it to be deep and meaningful. And we are the the, the country of the philosophers, uh, you know, with the enlightened, with the revolution, where we love to ask questions. We we want to go deep and understand the why and the how. And it has the positive aspect, but it's also... uh, you know, we also go on strike too easily because we want <laughs> to understand and argue before we actually say yes. Uh, so it can be paralyzing as well. But the, the de- depth is definitely a French thing. 
And, and if you look at the food, we want to know where our food comes from. If you look at fashion, we want, like designers are trying to um, convey something about the, what's happening in our society. And if you look at romance, well, it's obvious like to, to bond, we have to go deep into the emotions, show the vulnerable side. That's the first thing. The second pillar of the French art of seduction is um, honest and authentic. Um, and because like again if you look at the food french food usually we choose a really good quality product and we just enhance its qualities uh if you find a, a french dish that has a lot of sauce it's usually inherited from the war because back then they only had the cheap cuts so they had to yeah. let it stew for for a long time to kind of give it some flavor yeah. um but generally speaking we're just honoring the product what's already is um if we look at fashion and makeup it's about showing up rather than showing off so the what we call parisian makeup is very light and like there's no tons of makeup uh, and if you look at at fashion it's you know simple and elegant and about representing yourself so if one day you're super happy and joyful maybe you put like more colorful stuff if one day you feel more you know serious and structured you put some clothing that represents that as well but it's not about showing up it's really to show up as who you are mm -hmm. and in relationship obviously uh you want to know who you have in front of you because who are you dating otherwise <laughs> if it's all alive like what's the point um, and the last one, and everyone agrees, uh, it's passion. Like it's so French. <laughs> uh, and, and on all the all range of the spectrum, you know, like there's the happy excitement side of it, and there's the the conflict uh, explosion kind of it that also comes from the revolution. Um, it, because we, you know, we live with intensity in a way. Yeah. Uh, we want to feel all of life, all of it, the good and there's not so good. And with conflict, we have this understanding what that you know, bringing things to the surface is actually healthy because then we can learn and grow from it. So it's definitely an art of living, you know, everything is, I feel a bit intense compared to Australia. It's very different cultural background. So there's a lot of misunderstanding on the dating scene, for example, when French people yeah. and Australian people are dating, it's like, what the heck? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so it's always interesting to work with, um, yeah, with people of different backgrounds and learning from them. What are some of the the most common contradictions or the most common challenges that people find when they're cross cultural in that way? If you talk to people that are French or European and people that are Australian, what are the things that where they clash? So I think French people like to take their time, yep. and uh, and there's an element of mindfulness. So you see it in the way we drink wine; we drink it slowly, where Australians tend to scull it, and the same with dating. So. Uh, <laughs> A few times, you know, a date that would be, well, not very good, but not very bad either. And the, the guy would try to, to kiss the French girl and she's like, whoa, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was talking with someone who is uh, married with a Brazilian person and he was saying, well, me being Australian, I was just, you know, being cool should be right and all. And so the, the Brazilian guy thought that he wasn't interested because he, you know, if they didn't kiss straight away with something like that so i'm like that's interesting how depending where we come from we have different expectations of how should a date go or what moves or what they said or do you need to wait three days to send text message or all these ideas that we, we have from i don't know where but yeah. uh coming back for me you have to be authentic and if the connection is genuine and if you feel that there's this bond already why play games and and think about whatever rules set up by biba magazine or whatever uh, <laughs> so, so yeah it, it, this, there's no rule it's really following your heart it's just pure passion and impulse but i suppose you still have to think about what you're doing as well to a degree <laughs> You still have to have a bit of a uh, an understanding or an awareness of the situation you're in. It's not pure impulse and pure passion in a way. That's right. So yes, it's about awareness. And some people lack to total awareness. Like they think, oh yeah, like that went like a house on fire. And then they're like, well, why did she never text me back? I'm yeah. like, are you sure she felt the same thing? Are you sure it's you who had this perspective because that's your way of seeing the situation or usually you don't talk to anyone and this one time you had an opportunity to talk to someone so you just assume that it meant that it went well and maybe yeah. she's just a people pleaser and she didn't yeah. dare to say well look no 
<laughs> so yes, uh, there's a degree of awareness and uh, ability to read a room or read, you know, person's body language that comes into play yeah. Uh, yeah. at times. Yes. So, Oeli, tell us a bit about how you actually put this into practice. How do you work with people? How do you teach people um, to date and find love the French way? So I take people on a journey and usually it's like we start with a six weeks journey and it's really like a relationship reset. And we start by getting really clear on what relationship or what partner we want to bring into our lives. Because when I ask that first question, what do you want? Most people will answer by what they don't want. Yeah. And that quickly, very quickly explains why they have the relationship they have <laughs> and why they attract what they don't want. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's really hard for people to get clear on actually that's what I want because yeah. they go by all the expectations from the family or their social background or whatever it is. Yeah. So uh, becoming really clear of what they want for themselves and then um, becoming aligned with that vision, that person, that relationship. So let's say someone wants to date a guy that has six packs and goes to the gym. If she's eating Macca's every day, it's not going to work. There's very little <laughs> chances they're going to meet. Uh, and even if they cross in the street, he would probably not look at her. And even if they um, happen to be in a networking event, they would probably not have the kind of conversations that makes them tick yeah. so if that's really what she wants well then we have a discussion why is it so important what's the backstory uh in, in working on that so to really come into alignment with that person that relationship that you want to create in your life and then while we knock down all the walls whatever belief system or stories you're running in your subconscious that's holding you back or stopping you to take the steps or or whatever it is um we knock down so that and, and we uh we rewire the brain in a way um, to to find belief systems and thoughts that serve serve them uh, to create a better life and and the, the the idea is to really create a holistic life because you know if you love your life if you love yourself you become a magnet everyone wants like in a Harry met Sally when Harry met Sally yeah. you know I want what she's having you know that thing uh, so if you're having a great life and you're beaming people just like what's going on you're glowing I want that and you you're just a magnet and 80% of my clients have met someone organically after four or five sessions and most of the time the person was living like the building next door working at the desk oh. the next room or something like very very close That's but cool. what's interesting though is that so the, after these six weeks is really a reset and most of the time people meet someone in that short period of time but that's really just the start of the relationship so they really have to work in the long terms because sometimes the patterns don't show up in that first phase but really after a few months when someone let's say avoidant will just want to run away because suddenly it becomes kind of serious and oh my gosh it's too much for me so uh, really work on you know those underlying beliefs that uh, might ruin it for them all the time if they run unattended and that's where NLP comes in. You obviously do a lot of work Absolutely. in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. And so do yeah. you, yeah, yeah. how do you keep in, how do you keep in touch with everybody? They go through a six weeks program and then do they still see you periodically and, and check in every couple of months or how does that generally work? So with coaching, you know, you gain momentum and you build up, build up, build up. Um, and I typically had the, the, the case with a client yesterday where, she origin so she she was one of my first clients and she signed up originally for a 10 weeks package instead of six weeks that was 10 weeks back then and she met someone after three sessions yeah. and what happened happened then she was so happy on cloud nine that she didn't keep coming oh. and i kept telling her i said keep coming there's communication tools the conflict management tools that i can teach you so that you know you can nurture this relationship and it can only go better and better and so when when she hits the fan excuse my French, um, <laughs> she, you, you know how to handle that so that you can grow together. And surely enough, she didn't book her sessions. And now she's calling me back when she's like, oh my God, this went wrong. Oh, uh, so oh. I can't really tell her, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I told her, I said, look, the way coaching works is like we gain momentum and I give you the tools to get started. Now, when we work on an ongoing basis on the longer term, then we can space up the sessions a little bit so we can catch up every fortnight instead of weekly or maybe once a month, a bit later down the track. But it's really keeping your mind clean, keeping that mindset aligned with what you want instead of letting the reality of everyday 
you know, creeping in and chipping at you and getting you back in that mindset that wasn't serving you in the first place. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's a. Don't Do you find me. that um, it's men or women that generally come to you first and foremost for help in that area? So I started working with women and now I've opened to men and I get more men actually. And I absolutely love working with men because when they make that step, when they decide to work with a love coach, they are super committed and they take all the steps and they do everything wow. and they get the best results because they're not tiptoeing around. They're not questioning and maybe this and maybe that. And my girlfriend said or whatever, they're just <laughs> like, okay, let's do this. And, and that's amazing to see the shifts. That's, that's incredible. I, I love it. I love it. And so I'm assuming then, you know, you work with people that are single, but also people that are couples and still want to just build a, a stronger connection and want to grow their relationship. Absolutely. I usually work just with one of the two oh. uh, and that's enough. And that's enough because if that person comes back in alignment with themselves, um, they start, you know, communicating and, and projecting things differently and it creates a ripple effect on the relationship there's usually one of the two that's in a relationship that's more determined to you know to to go and see someone yeah. like you might have different ways of wanting to solve problem but it's usually one of the two that say okay let's go and see a counselor or oh, let's let's go and have a coach um so yeah working with the most committed of the two because like any coaching is business coaching, weight loss coaching or love coaching. Like it starts with your commitment to yourself and to your results. Because if you're only half-assed, you're going to get half-assed results. Oh. Um, and no matter how much juju and NLP I'm doing, <laughs> if you're not walking the talk in your life, I mean, you know, um, yeah. so definitely working together towards the results, but you have to be committed to your results. And so how much work do you give people during your, between your sessions? Well, I try not to give them too much because I want them to live their life. And so I work uh, exclusively online now. Okay. Uh, and I tell them it's because I'd rather you spend one hour with me and have like a great long date or multiple dates outside than spending so much time with me. Um, so I give them a bit of journaling or some different exercises and activities but nothing you know that will take over all their week and most of the time they wouldn't anyway um but what i do though is um they can contact me leave me voice message or or text message whenever they want and wow. i come back to them 24 hours simply because i want to work on an emotion when it's at its peak yeah. because if you wait for the next session and then we're working on the memory of an emotion and then it's actually a story that you attach to something that happened so it's really important for me anyway that to to work on it when it's still hot so that we can actually address it and bit in the bud um and and so they can move forward between sessions then don't have to wait the next the next one to to keep moving I forward i love that that's a really interesting point um and i'd love to know just for fun i'm sure everybody's interested as well what do what are, what are the, some of the common things that men say to you? And what are some of the common things that women say to you when they come to see you for the first time? But men often uh, would say, oh, I don't have time or, or you know, I'm so busy. or and, and, and it's typically a defense mechanism, you know, because yeah. if you value something enough, you make time for it. And if they already had the lady that they're really interested in, they would probably make the time to date. Yeah. Uh, so time is, is yeah just an excuse um women a lot of the time so depending on the status but one of the things that inspired me to do the interview series last year was women saying oh you know uh, men are intimidated by my status or how much money i'm making and um and, and so they think that's that's why they can't attract someone because you know men are just intimidated by them yeah uh, you know a lot of the time people consciously say they want a relationship but if they're not in a relationship right now it's because it's part of them that doesn't want to yeah. and if it doesn't want to it's 80 percent of the time it's a safety thing he's not yeah. feeling safe about around someone else not feeling safe with themselves like i'm not good enough or i'm going to lose myself or or, or I have I had experience in the past, or I've witnessed that with, with my parents. So, um, and and I don't remember too many of the stories because I really listened to the language, how they're talking, how they're formulating the story rather than the story itself. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so that gives me indication of what's a fact and what's the meaning that they they attach to the circumstances. 
Gotcha. Because it's not the same. Like any circumstance is very neutral, but what makes it a positive or a negative thing is the thought you have about it. So yeah, that's that's what I, I look at. So that's that's very funny. Yeah, sometimes what they come up with because I'm like you're saying that, but actually there's so so much attachment to all the reasons why it can't work, or all the reasons why it's not possible. So they say no, of course it's possible. I want it, but yeah. then they have so many justifications as no, 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 no. So so that's about debunking that one, bringing that to awareness uh, because a lot of them wouldn't admit that actually they're really scared of being in a relationship and to why is it so scary and what can we do to bring peace and safety in your life because once you've reached that state of complete peace then nothing can really hurt you because you know how to manage that you know how to deal with it that's right i love yeah. it and, and then once you're in that state you're you attract so many people because you're you glow in a way you're totally at ease with yourself you're confident and you just oh, absolutely people just gravitate towards that energy yeah. yeah, and vice versa, like people who say, oh, I always attract toxic relationships. Well, you have to look at what does that mean about you? What do you project or how do you see yourself? Are you having a toxic language with yourself? Like, how are you talking to yourself? Do you love yourself? Because if you're not loving yourself, why should anyone else? And, and that's what you're, what you're projecting. So yeah. and, and however, sometimes... whatever space you are in, uh, that's what you're going to project outside. So you really want to make sure you feel good with yourself, that you put yourself priority number one. And for the parents as well, like, uh, like I had a few conversations lately with parents and they're like, oh, you know, I can't, I have to do all the things for the kids. And I'm like, well, think about it. Um, think of what you're teaching your children. You're teaching them that they have to be last. You're teaching them that you can't be happy unless you look after others. You, so, But if you model happiness, if you show them that being a parent is fun and you're enjoying the process and sometimes it's messy and it's still okay and you're not in a state of stress all the time and work, you're enjoying work or whatever it is, but if you can model happiness, that's what they will learn. They will not listen to the words you're saying. Um, they will they will pick up on what you're doing, and that's what will become their belief system for their happiness or their relationship stories in the future. Just like my grandparents' story, you know, triggered my own relationships, my my idea of safety around relationships. Yeah, wow, I love it. Yeah, I mean, so what I'm really hearing is that it's so much of this, and it makes perfect sense. So much of this is about understanding yourself and doing the work on yourself before you start to go out there and expect to find your perfect soulmate you know it all starts here absolutely and when you do it just comes you, do, you don't yeah. even have to go any, have anywhere to i have this funny story uh there's a there's a lady i knew she lives in melbourne and uh, she was working on on her money mindset and she was like okay so i've got a spare room so i'll put it on airbnb so that would be a bit extra money coming in and the first guy who came knocked at the door for the Airbnb, well, they ended up together for six years. Oh my God. So sometimes you don't even have to go anywhere, you know? You've got Incredible. to be happy with yourself. I don't recommend <laughs> that. So that's not a strategy, okay? But that can happen. <laughs> See, you can even have someone knocking at your door. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Love it. Well, uh, Aurélie, thank you so much for, you know, explaining um, more about what you do. And I just love that topic, the French art of seduction. I'm sure there's so much more to it. Um, but tell us more about how people can find you and learn more about your programs and everything else. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. Um, so you can simply find me at, we're going to write it down, aurelierv.com. So that's my website <laughs> and uh, the French art of seduction on Instagram. But yeah, check in the comment because the spelling is French. <laughs> Perfect. And I'll make sure I spell it properly and I'll put it all in the comments for everybody to link to. And do you work with people all over the world or do you have a particular niche or preference? All over the world, yes. The world? Uh, no, I do have a few clients in Switzerland, France, and in the US. Wow. Um, yeah. So because I'm online, you know, we can really chat about everything. And, and you know, also there's a cultural... Uh, aspect to it um again i i work on the language and the deeper layer so love works it. for everybody love that so it must have been really fascinating for you to come to australia and start to see the differences between 
Europe and Australia in how we date? I've lived in six different countries, so there's definitely different trends in different countries, different parts of the world. Thank you so, so much, Darren. That was really awesome to have this conversation with you. Yeah. Have a lovely day, everybody. Spread the love because, you know, that's that's what we're here for. We're not. When I was four years old, I said to my mom, I don't understand. Why are we here? If it's just to work and pay the bills, it's really not fun. So, so now I'm doing it by spreading the love and I really love it. So true. I absolutely love that. That is so true. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Aurelie, that was, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. And everybody, check out her links. I'm going to put them in the show notes. Check out her coaching. She's a lovely girl. And if you need some salsa lessons as well, <laughs> she's your person to ask. But um, <laughs> everyone, have a fantastic afternoon. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you very, very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. Bye for now. Thanks, Aurelie. Thank you. Thanks again for joining me for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. If you would like to join me as a guest on the show, I would be delighted to collaborate. Feel free to buzz me on 0414 659 800 or email me on darren at suspendedanimation.com.au. I'm always on the lookout for great guests who can share their stories and expertise with my community. Also, if you have been thinking about putting your own podcast together and not sure where to begin, look no further. I run a really simple three-part podcasting course, one-on-one with me, where I walk you through the entire podcasting journey. You will end up with a fantastic new podcast to start sharing right away. Feel free to get in touch to discuss further. But for now, though, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.